Good evening, Stanen. Happy Father's Day to every fathers. And uh, we thank the Lord for such a uh, grace and kindness to us that He is our Father doubly by virtue of creation and by virtue of adoption through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we will study that tonight and how to attain that joy in God to the Lord Jesus Christ because He is our Father. And now we are celebrating Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. We should celebrate it every day to honor our fathers. We should celebrate as well Mother's Day every day to honor our mothers. For now, let us open our Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 6. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 6. I'll read, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your word tonight. We pray, Father, that by your grace we may be able to meditate it. You give us ears to hear and eyes to see that we may behold wonders out of your word and see your glory and behold, O oh God, your beauty and honor you and glorify you because of that. Lead us, O Lord, by your spirit. May your Holy Spirit work in us mightily and may you Forgive us for the sins we have done before you and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Give us eyes to see, dear Lord, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we may see you and bless your name, that we may honor you and celebrate your goodness and your kindness towards us, our Father. As all these things, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So those are the introduction of Paul, the way he introduces his message to the church at uh, Ephesus, that he is guiding his children in the faith to the blessedness of knowing God or finding our joy in God through the Lord Jesus Christ. He said that blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that there is a blessing that is found on our God and our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And then he enumerated all these blessings that we have in Christ because the Father, through his kindness and through the redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ, has bought that and brought that in us. The first blessing that he had in us is of our um, blessing in the Lord Jesus Christ, the spiritual blessing that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ is of our election, as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him, that He chose us before the foundation of the world, and that choosing is on the foreknowledge of God, that we should be holy and blameless. That's the purpose holy and blameless before Him. The second one is adoption. In His predestination or for knowledge, he, he is planning for our adoption to Himself as sons through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the first, the second blessing. Election, and then second is adoption. According to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. And these truths are very, very big. No? in pursuing this with joy no? in our hearts that we should be blessing God because He has given us this blessing in us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, um, the question is how and why should we 
pursue this, this blessedness in God through our Lord Jesus Christ? That's the question. Why and how should we pursue this? So, um, I entitled this message, The Pursue of Our Joy or the Father's Joy in Christ. Our Joy in Christ. The Pursue of Our Joy in Christ. So, the pursuit of our joy in Christ. The aim of this sermon is to channel our understanding from the universal pursuit of happiness, the happiness of man, to the pursuit of joy that is only found in God, in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is to show the progression of that pursuit and to encourage everyone, especially the fathers, who is the leader of the family, to pursue their joy in God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that is the ultimate pursuit of every man. Happiness. And here our fathers are the leaders of every family. Let us lead our family, our children, our wife to the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our ultimate pursuit. So, this sermon is divided into three questions. The first question is, why do people pursue happiness? The second question is, why do Christians or why do Christians need to pursue their joy in Christ? And thirdly, how should we pursue our joy in Christ? How? So there's a progression there. First, why do people pursue happiness? I've read an article that says, the chief end of life is to pursue happiness. The chief end of life is to pursue happiness. And this came from a blog post, an article of a millennial. A millennial. Maybe that explains the worldview of YOLO and FOMO. YOLO, which means, what's YOLO means? You only live once or seize the day. Seize the day. Because that is the essence of life. To pursue happiness with all your strength, with all your resources, with all your time. But you only live once so that pursue it with, with your strength. Ngawin mo na karoon ang ginabuhat sa itong mga young people. If they have that mindset. You only live once, seize the day, pursue it. Because the chief end of life is happiness. My goal is to be happy. And that explains as well their mindset about FOMO. What's FOMO? Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. And that's why they're always, they're always trying to be in their social media. Because they, they are fearing that they are missing out something fun. That their friends and their family or their classmates are doing. It's that pursuit of happiness. So I started to dig deep on the subject and found the article, and it came from a concept that was popularized by Aristotle. It says, happiness is the meaning and purpose of life. Happiness is the meaning and purpose of life, the whole aim and the end of human existence. Happiness is the meaning of life, the whole aim and end of human existence. The key question Aristotle seeks to answer in his teaching is, quote, what is the ultimate purpose of human existence? Why are we here? What is the ultimate purpose of human existence? What is the end or goal for which we should direct all of our activities? What is it? What is the end goal of everything that we do? That's the main question of Aristotle. Everywhere, we see people seeking pleasure, wealth, and good reputation. But while each of this has some value, none of them can occupy the place of a chief good for which humanity should aim. To be an ultimate end, an act must be self-sufficient and final, that which is always desirable in itself, and never for the sake of something else, 
and it must be sustainable and attainable by man. It's the question. So Aristotle claims that nearly everyone would agree that happiness is the end which meets all these requirements. That is desirable, self-sufficient in itself. It's final and desirable and attainable by men. All men would agree that happiness is the end with which all these requirements convey. It is easy enough to see that we desire money, pleasure, and honor only because we believe that these goods will make us happy. Will make us happy. It seems that all other goods are a means towards obtaining happiness. While happiness is always an end in itself. Happiness is always an end in itself. Why you are here? Because you want to be happy in God. Why you are here? Why you are doing? Why you are studying? Because you want high grades, and high grades will lead you to happiness. So happiness is always an end in itself. We can see that whole concept of Aristotle is based on the pursuit of happiness by men, and that pursuit of happiness is a universal pursuit. All men seek that. Not only is this universal pursuit, it is also an ultimate pursuit of men. The chief end of life is to pursue happiness. The pursuit of happiness, or pursuit to be blessed, or blessedness, it's a universal pursuit and the ultimate pursuit of men. So that is, uh, that came from an ancient philosopher. But how about a Christian perspective? Blaise Pascal, you, you know him? Blaise Pascal, he's a physics and science, he's a mathematics, he is a brilliant mathematician and physicist. He is also a Christian. He has a book, and he has a quote in that book, Observing Happiness, Pursuit of Happiness of Men. And he said, quote, All men seek happiness. All men seek happiness. This is without exemption. Whatever different means they employ, they all tend to this end. Happiness. The cause of some going to war and the others avoiding it is the same desire in both attending with different views. The will never takes the least step but to this object. This is the motive of every action of every man, even to those who hang themselves. Happiness. So all men seek happiness. Again, the pursuit of happiness is universal pursuit, and it's the ultimate pursuit. It is the motive of every action, even to those who hang themselves. It is the motive of a man going to war and a man avoiding war. Happiness with different views in mind, happiness. So it is universal pursuit and an ultimate pursuit. And even the Bible is teaching us that the ultimate pursuit of an individual's life is to find joy. The ultimate pursuit of an individual's life is to find joy. Psalm 1611, show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You want the path of life? In the presence of God there is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 37, 4, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Delight. Philippians 4, 4, Paul is commanding his, his listener to rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice, rejoice, delight. Find in the presence of God. Ecclesiastes 3, 12 to 13, I perceive that there is nothing better for us than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. Happiness is God's gift to man. Man is created to pursue happiness. That's why there is a universal pursuit. And there's an ultimate pursuit of that. Because God created men to pursue happiness. So if 
the pursuit of happiness is universal and ultimate, and even the Word of God is teaching us and commanding and commending us to pursue happiness, why is the world full of hate and misery and trouble? Why is the world? Why are we still in misery and trouble? Why? Because we seek our happiness apart from God. We seek our happiness apart from God. The problem is not in the pursuit of happiness. The problem is in the object of that pursuit. We seek our happiness apart from God. While others pursue happiness from health, wealth, and power and reputation, we need to pursue our joy in God, our Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ. That leads me to my second question. Why do we need to pursue our joy in Christ? Why do we need to pursue that joy to our God, our Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ? C.S. Lewis famously said, Don't let your happiness depend on something you may lose. Don't let your happiness depend on something you may lose. God cannot give us happiness and peace apart from Himself because it is not there. It is, there is no such thing. And there is a kind of happiness and wonder that makes you serious. Why do we need to pursue our joy in Christ? Because true joy is only found in God. God cannot give us happiness and peace apart from Himself. There is no such thing. It is not there. It is not there. So joy is only found in God. Pursue it in God. Joy is lasting and secure. The key to that joy is a relationship. The key to that joy is a relationship. Every key to every joy is a relationship. A relationship that is proper and good is the key to joy. A relationship to a person, a relationship to the person of Christ is the key to that joy. You want to be blessed with every spiritual blessing that is in the Father? you must have first a relationship to the person of Christ. That's the prerequisite of that blessedness. All the spiritual blessing that we have is channeled through a relationship in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to seek joy, have a relationship first in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ had bought that joy by His blood. He bought that joy by His blood. <laughs> so this is not a cheap joy. The joy that you have, the joy that you will be pursuing, is not a cheap joy because it was bought by the blood of Christ. It was bought by the blood of your Savior. It was purchased by a life, the life of the Lord. So if you have this joy, the joy of that salvation, continue to cultivate that relationship by knowing Him more. But if you don't have that joy yet, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and repent upon your sins. Because no matter how you pursue that joy with your strength, with your money, with all the resources that you have, you cannot attain that joy. We cannot attain that happiness, that blessedness in God. Because all that blessedness are only channeled to one person which is a relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ because he had bought that joy not only that he had bought that joy there's always another key to that joy is is in the presence of his spirit the Holy Spirit will bring forth in you that joy that Christ had purchased on the cross if you continually abide in him if you keep in step with the Spirit, He will bring forth the fruit of the Spirit, which is, as we have read earlier, love, joy, peace, and so on and so forth. So another key of pursuing our joy in God is His Spirit, the presence of His Spirit in us. 
He will bring forth that joy in you if you keep in step, if you synchronize your thoughts and your feelings in the Holy Spirit. That's why we should always seek the presence of the Holy Spirit. We should always pray in the Spirit and ask His guidance and illumination to guide us in our every decisions and to guide us in our life because the Spirit will bring forth joy in us. As you have read earlier in Galatians, the Spirit and the flesh are in war against each other. They're war against each other. So whoever wins, those whom you always feed. So if you want your flesh to win, feed it with worldly desires, worldly pursuit of joy, or happiness. If you want your spirit to win, Feed your spirit with the word of God. And pray with the spirit that the spirit will empower you to slay that flesh in you. That's why Paul would say in Romans 8 that if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. If you continue in the work of the flesh, you will die. Your spirit will die. So that we do not... So that, so do not be conformed to this world. If you conform to this world, you will die. But if by the Spirit you renew your mind by the Word of God, you put to death the deeds of the body, the deeds of the flesh, and you will live. And you will have joy and peace and love. Just the fruit of the Spirit. That's the other key of that joy. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the last key so that joy in Christ is the power of God in doing everything for His glory. Charles Simmons said, Christian life is enjoying everything in God and enjoying God in everything. That is true. That is the essence of Christian life. Enjoying everything in God of who God is in the Scripture and enjoying God in everything. We must first enjoy everything in God of who He is as He revealed Himself in the Scripture before we enjoy God in everything, in everything that we do. So that whether we eat or drink, so whatever we do, we do all for the glory of God. We must first enjoy God. We must first enjoy everything in God, His character. Our joy in Christ is tied up to everything God is. That's what Charles Simeon is trying to say. Our joy in God is tied up to everything God is. Christian life is enjoying everything in God. It is tied up to everything God is, especially His glory. Our joy is tied up to His glory. So if, if our joy is tied up to His glory, those things are not contradictory with each other. Our joy is not contradictory to the glory of God. They are complementary. They work together. That our joy in God will bring forth God the highest and the greatest glory. Let's have an example. I glorify Siguro ang pagpalangga ko kay Nerge if I rejoice and I always admire her. And I'm happy and deeply satisfied in her. And that is exemplified by telling her every day that she is beautiful. That I enjoy her. In every relationship, your joy in that person is complementary to the glory of that love to that person. That's why John Piper would say that God is most glorified in you when you are most satisfied in Him. When you are enjoying Him, God is most glorified in you. So, musad na sa 
Nga dako ang value sa isa ka person if you enjoy him or her. Diba? And the summit of that joy is praise. Diba? The summit of that joy is praise. So, if our joy is tied up to everything God is, especially His glory, then God is as committed to our joy in Him as He is committed to His ultimate purpose in the universe, which is His glory. No? So God is committed to our joy as well because that joy is committed to His glory. If we are happy in Him, then He is glorified in us. The best way that we can glorify God is by enjoying Him. The best way that we can glorify our relationship is to enjoy that relationship. So, if our joy in Christ, if we have the person of Christ and the presence of Christ in His Spirit and the power of Christ that bought and brought us joy in life, so how should we now pursue our joy in God, our Father, in the Lord Jesus Christ? Our joy in Christ is foundational. It is not an option. That is everything that we have. Christian life is enjoying everything in God and enjoying God in everything. It is secured by Christ's blood and is bring forth by His Spirit. It is essential to Christian living that accepts sorrow, pain, and suffering for the glory of Christ. So if we have this, if Christ had laid the foundation of that joy by, he, by our relationship to Him, by the presence of His Spirit, and by the power of God to uphold that glory because His glory is tied up to our joy, so how now should we pursue our joy in Christ? How should the Father pursue their joy in God, their Father? And they may lead their children and their families, their wives, their wife, to pursue their joy in God. And that will lead us to another text in Philippians chapter 4. How to pursue our joy in Christ. I like the word pursuit in relation to our joy in Christ. Because pursuit is such an active word. It means joy is something that we fight for. Joy is something that we fight for. Being happy with someone is something that we fight for. It's not a passive thing. It's an active pursuit. It is to exhort effort in every possible way. To work from preparation to execution. That's the word pursuit. So there is a effort from preparation and execution. Since we have this, so how do we now pursue our joy in Christ? Since Christ already laid that foundation. As what Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, 3 verse 12, not that I've already obtained this, or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus had made me his own. How do we now press on? To make that joy in us, to pursue that joy in us, in the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we bring forth that joy since Christ already bought that joy and by His Spirit he is guiding us, giving us the power to pursue that joy? No? This is very different to an unbeliever pursuing joy. Why it's very different? Because we do have the power now to pursue that joy. And that power is in God. Not only the power, but the source of it. The source of joy is God. The unbelievers do not have that. That's why we Christians must pursue that blessedness that Christ had purchased with all our might and joy because Christ already made that our own Basta na balang to na lang ka kay nang pa-enroll ka na wala ka na choice because 
Na na kadra. Nagsuod na ka sa ring. Basketball man na. Foul na lang. Or try to shoot something. Because you are already there. Christ has already purchased that. We must work it out in our lives. That's why Paul said in Philippians 2, no, work out your salvation, the joy of that salvation, with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for His good pleasure. I am saying that salvation is by works. Paul is saying that we must work it out. Christ already bought it. Christ already has given that to you by His grace, through your faith. You receive that through faith. So you must show it to others if you really has been saved. So how should we pursue that joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ? We have, I have three here. The first one is by humility and gentleness. The second one is holiness in thoughts and deeds. And the third one it's hope in the kindness of God. All three, H. So, naman ako sa kong deduction. This is our text. Philippians 4. Please open your Bibles to Philippians 4. Philippians 4, chapter 1. Uh, Philippians chapter 4. Verse, verse 1. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat Iodia and entreat Syndicate to agree in the Lord. Yes, I also, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be made known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which will pass all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there, in a, if there is any excellence, if there is any worthy of praise, think about these things. Whatever you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So again, how should we pursue our joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ first is by humility and gentleness. If you want to be happy, be humble and be gentle. If you want your daddy to be happy, pray that he will be humble and gentle. That's it. If you want to, to be a happy dad, be humble and be gentle. Why? Because humility is the foundation with which joy flourish. It's a reason. Humility is the foundation with which joy flourish. Humility is the source of joy. It is one of the foundation stones of authentic Christian life because it is the dwelling place of love. Genuine joy is expressed in Christ-like humility. Humility is the foundation with which joy flourish. So how can I, how do we see humility in Philippians chapter 4 verses 1 to 9? We see that in chapter two, uh, chapter 4 verse 2. When Paul had entreated Iodia and Syntyche and as well as um, do not be anxious about anything. Rejoicing in the Lord always and again as a rejoice command is sandwiched by that circumstances. Why do we need humility in pursuing our joy? Because of two things. First, no matter how mature you are, no matter how mature the church are, there's always conflict in the church and in the family. We need humility to resolve that conflict. And second, no matter how mature you are in the Lord, 
there are always circumstances that would lead you to be anxious and to be fearful. And you need humility as well to go to God and to cast your cares before Him. So first, humility in conflict. Paul said here in chapter 4, verse 2, I entreat Ayodja, I entreat Syndicate to agree in the Lord. You see, the book of Philippians is the only book actually that Paul wrote that it has an overflow of joy. No matter the problem here. It is obvious that there is a problem here. The problem of conflict between these two women, Iodia and Syntyche. And he is entreating them. He is pleading with them that to agree in the Lord. To agree in the Lord. And not only these two women, he is pleading, he is also asking true companion. That's the word. That's the name of, of that person, true companion. To help these women. To help these women. Who had labored side by side with me in the gospel. Together with Clement. And the rest of the fellow workers whose names are written in the book of life. So these women are matured believers. They are fellow workers with Paul and Clement. And yet they conflict. They do not agree with certain things in the church. You see? That's why I said, no matter how mature you are, no matter how mature the church are, or no matter how mature the family is, there's always conflict. And the best way to resolve that conflict or disunity is humility. Because the foundation of unity in the church is humility of each member. Where do I get that? Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, <coughs> verses 1 to 5. <clears throat> Verse 1, So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Be united. Be of the same love. Be of full accord. Be of one mind. How to do it? Verse 3. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. How to be united? Be humble. Let each of you look not to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mindset. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. This is the mindset of Christ, a mindset of humility. Jesus Christ exemplified that in the following verses, in verse 6 to, to 11. That's why God has highly exalted him. The Father has highly exalted him because of his humility. And if you want to be united with the same love, with the same mind, in full accord, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. But in humility, count others more significant than yourself. So if you want unity in the church and in the homes, cultivate humility. Because whenever humility is in there, unity will just flourish. And whenever unity flourish, peace with one another flourish. And whenever peace flourish, there's joy. Diba? Sa Jaraman, kung wala away sa panimalay ka sa simbahan, di ba? There is peace with one another. There is always joy. So one way to combat uh, conflict is to be humble. And conflict is a joy killer. Conflict is a joy killer. That's the first one. Why we need to, how do we, how do we pursue our joy in Christ is be humble. Because no matter how mature you are, there's always conflict. And the best way to remedy that conflict is humility. Counting others more significant than yourself. Finding your joy in the joy of your loved ones. Finding your joy in the joy of your spouse. Counting their interest more than your interest. 
I'm saying that plainly, but it's very, very difficult to do. Huh? We have this practice, coming on one in urge, in bringing gifts with one another, or in, let's say, I, I do want this, something, si nurse ang mapalit ana. Because he is counting his joy, <laughs> sa huwan joy. And, kung may gusto si nurse, ako mapalit ana. Huh? It is hitting two birds at one stone. No? Finding your joy in the joy of your spouse. Finding your joy in the joy of your loved ones. By counting their interests more significant than your own interest. But their interest is also your own interest. Right? It needs practice. Second. The second one is no matter how mature you are, there's always circumstances that would lead you to be fearful and anxious. That's why you need humility. Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, after he said that uh, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, he said, do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. So there are always situations that you will be anxious Every day, no? We are so anxious. I think siguro sa generation, no? Or sa environment mismo. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So how does humility goes with circumstances will lead you to be anxious? Paul did not answer here, but Peter answered that in First Peter. Chapter 5, verse 7. Peter said, um, Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. This is a very familiar verse. Cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. No? Or, do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. It's the same thing. Paul and Peter is saying the same thing. To cast your anxieties on God. And the problem many people do not cast their anxieties on God and request to God is not they are fearful of God, but because they are proud of themselves. Peter said, before the verses in 6, he said, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time He may exalt you. Cast all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. So the problem of not casting our anxieties, our cares, our problems to God, it's not a fear issue, it is a pride issue. You don't go to God in prayer because you are proud. Because we think that we can solve our problem on our own. That we can be strong in solving this. So in circumstances that would lead you to be anxious, you need humility to cast that cares before God. You need humility. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time, He may exalt you. He may show His grace that is sufficient for you. That His power is made perfect in your weaknesses. So those are the two. And if you humble yourselves into the mighty hands of God by casting your cares upon Him because He cares for you in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, letting your request be made known to God, and the result of God is that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus our Lord. The same thing. The result is peace. If we humble ourselves, the result is peace. Now, the peace is, is not peace with one another, but the peace of God. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding that will guard our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus our Lord. The peace of God. That the peace that comes from above. And it is a greater peace. The peace of God. Again, whenever peace flourish, joy 
will just follow. So you have, if you have the peace of God that surpasses understanding, no matter how difficult the exam is, no matter how difficult the interview is, you have that peace, and you have that joy, and you have that hope. You have that hope na nakapasar ka. You have that hope. And there's joy. So my brothers and sisters the Lord, how to pursue our joy in God through Lord Jesus Christ? Be humble and be gentle. There's always circumstances and conflict in our lives that needs humility to resolve that conflict and circumstances. The second one is holiness. Holiness in thoughts and deeds. Holiness in thoughts and deeds. Holiness, why we need uh, holiness in our pursuit of our joy in God through our, through our Lord Jesus Christ because holiness is the focal point with which joy is framed. It is the focus with which joy is framed. Every pursuit has a path and the path of that pursuit of happiness is holiness. Again, every pursuit has a path, and the path of that pursuit of happiness is holiness. If you want to be truly happy, frame yourself in the path of holiness. Because those who are truly happy are truly holy. People avoid holiness to pursue happiness, not knowing that the two are one. If you're a Christian, if you want to be truly happy, be holy. Because those two are one. It is the focal point with which joy is framed. You cannot be happy in God if you are not holy. That's the power. Because purity precedes power. Purity precedes power. As Thomas Brooks said in his book, holiness is happiness in the bud and happiness is holiness at the full. What do he mean by that? Holiness is happiness in the bud. Flower, no? Ang gabad pa lang. No? Holiness is happiness in the bud. Ang sugod pa lang, that is holiness. And happiness is holiness in the full. Happiness is nothing but an essence of holiness. Happiness is the essence of holiness. So where do I get that in the verse? In uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, rather. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is worthy of praise, think about these things. Pursue holiness in every aspect of your thinking because the battle is in the mind first. That's why Paul said in, first, in, in Romans chapter 12, after he said the whole gospel, the application is to renew our mind by the gospel. Do not be conformed to this world, but be renewed by the transforming of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds, brother. And you can transform that mind, your mind, with the Word of God. So if you have that joy, no? and if you want to pursue that joy, whatever is true, Honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, any excellence, any worthy of praise. Think about these things. Make every effort to think about these things. Or frame yourself in that path. Frame yourself in that path. Hindi ka na tumag kadto pa sa mga butang na maka Hugaw sa'yo mo panguna-una. Oh, guard yourself. Guard yourself. So frame yourself in that path. Because holiness is the focal point with which joy is framed. 
not only guard yourself sa imong thoughts, but also sa imong nga practice. But thoughts must be guarded first before you practice that whatever you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. Practice these things. So if your, if your mind is renewed, your speech is also is renewed and your actions and your habits will also be renewed. So it must be on the mind first. That's why Paul would say that the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Have it memorized because it will it will restrain you from sinning against God. It will sustain you in times of trouble and difficulties. It will strengthen you. It will uphold you. It will bless you. That's why wholeness is very important in our pursuit. Because we cannot be truly happy if we are not truly holy. Because our God is truly holy. Thirdly, so not only that we pursue our joy in God, our Lord Jesus Christ, by humility, because humility is the foundation with which joy flourish. Second, by holiness, because holiness is the focal point with which joy is framed. And lastly, if we want to be sustained by it, we must be hopeful in the kindness of God. Because hope is the motivation with which joy is sustained. Without hope, our pursuit in the path of holiness and humility will be a short-lived pursuit. Without hope, it will be a short-lived pursuit. Hope is the motivation with which joy is sustained. That's why Paul said, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. The fruit of hope is joy. If you have hope on the Lord Jesus Christ because He has given us hope, He has given that hope in us, you will always persevere because that hope will motivate you to continue. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ, His hope is to glorify God. That's why the author of Hebrews said in, in Hebrews that we must to look on the Lord Jesus Christ, to look unto the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and who is now seated at the right hand of God. His hope to endure and to endure the shame and suffering is for him to have joy in God and seated now at the right hand of God to honor him and to glorify him. That is his hope why he endured those suffering and shame. For us, our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ and in His promises. And our ultimate hope is that He will come again. He will come again and He will rescue us and He will save us from the presence of sin. That our salvation will now be complete at His coming. In Philippians chapter 1, the very hope of Paul there, why he remained steadfast and joyful in spite of his situation in the book of Philippians, that Paul is in prison. Now notice, ang, ang book of Philippians is a book, is a um, prison epistle. No, he wrote it in the prison. No, Even though he is in the prison, even though the gospel is blocked by his imprisonment, still he rejoices and he's encouraging everyone to rejoice with him. Why? Because of this hope. In Philippians chapter 1, verse, verse 6. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And I am sure of this, and this is my hope, that he who began a good work in you, in me, will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. He who began a good work in you will finish it until the day of Christ. He has given you goodness and kindness in your salvation. Hope in that. 
He will finish it until the day of Christ. Hope in God that He will do as what He had said, that He will finish it until the day of Christ, that you will endure, that you will persevere, that you will persevere in the path of holiness and humility because the reward is joy. No? I always example sa mga tao nga nang uh, panguyab and then sugat dulong. No? Sugat dulong? Kapoy biya na? Sa no? Kapoy na. And then, sugat dulong, mas kalayo pa kayo. But mawala lang kakapoy kay makita lang kalipay. No? Sa imong hinigugma or smile sa imong hinigugma. No? Kaya na lang. I have also a, a similar feeling sa pag-accomplish ang isa ka-project. No, no matter how difficult the project is and how uh, tedious it is, at the end of the day, when your boss said to you that, well done, well done, good work, very good, and all that joy, kawala. Mo ba na inyong experience? Kawala ba ba <laughs> I hope na kawala because it, 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 it will motivate you to do again another project. No? Because the uh, reward of good works is more work. Right? Sana siya. So, the hope of Paul is that God would finish his work in him. That no matter what circumstances will be, no matter the conflict in his life, the work of God will be accomplished in him because God, by his omnipotent and om- omnipotence and omnipresence and omniscience and omnibulence of God, he will make sure that it will be done at the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will endure, that you will persevere because Christ, because God, through, the, through Christ, through his Spirit, will preserve you and will make you endure by faith. Again, endurance is always by faith. And that faith will always produce in us good works. So how should our fathers pursue his joy in God for Lord Jesus Christ? And how should we pray for them? Let's pray for them that they should be humble and gentle. Second one, that they should be holy. And third, that they should be hopeful at the coming of their Savior. And that they may lead their wife and their children into that pursuit as well. That all the family will be a humble family, a holy family, and a hopeful May the Lord God guide us in that pursuit. May the Lord God give us His power through His Spirit to pursue that blessedness in Christ Jesus because He already has bought that. It's a matter of bringing that up and we have now the power of the Holy Spirit in us to bring forth that joy. The end is near. The Lord is at hand, as Paul said in Philippians chapter 4. Thus, we must pursue our joy and happiness and blessedness in God through our Lord Jesus Christ in the path of holiness and humility and hopefulness with steadfastness and remembrance that the chief end of men is to glorify God by enjoying Him forever. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Thank you for your word. May your grace be with us, dear Lord, <clears throat> as we apply these words in our lives, as we apply this pursuit of our joy in you, in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for our fathers. We pray that may you lead them as they lead your children into that pursuit of joy in you. 
that it may be their ultimate pursuit, that they may find their joy and satisfaction in you, knowing that our joy in you is always tied up to your glory, that you are most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in you. So lead us, dear Lord, and help us by your grace and by the power of the Holy Spirit that we may pursue a life of humility and gentleness, that we may pursue a life of holiness in thoughts and in deeds, and pursue a life of hopefulness in the blessed hope that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, all these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen.